Gracious God, we thank you for your word, for in it and through it you reveal yourself to us. Help us to hear you and to see you today. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This passage we have heard from the prophet Jeremiah is a very instructive passage. Jeremiah was a prophet who spoke to both the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, and he was active in the 6th and 7th centuries B.C. Now, if you remember that history, you'll realize that that was the time during which the northern kingdom had already been overrun by the Assyrian Empire, and the southern kingdom was kind of just sitting there waiting for what might happen next, wondering if they were on the list for the Assyrians to come down and overrun them as well, which it wasn't the Assyrians that got them. It was the next empire that came through. But Jeremiah was speaking to them and trying to help them understand what their situation was. And he was trying to tell them to be strong because God was going to do something new. God was going to give them something new that would help them in their situation. And Jeremiah went on to say that this was going to be a new covenant between God and his people, but it would be different from the covenant that brought the people out of Egypt. Jeremiah makes reference to this covenant that brought them out of slavery, but this covenant was written on stone, inanimate objects that were outside of people that they had to look at to see, to remember, to read. And Jeremiah was saying, this new covenant that I'm talking about, it's going to be a different kind of covenant. It's not going to be external because God's going to write it on our hearts. Right on our hearts. So that we don't have to depend on anything else to remind us of that covenant. It's going to be right here. And Jeremiah goes on to say that as part of that covenant, God's not going to remember our iniquities. God is going to forgive our sins. That's a major piece of that covenant. That's what God is promising to do for us. And we are to remember that because it will be on our very hearts. Has anybody here this morning had bypass heart surgery? I know some of you have. Yeah. You know what it's like then to have your chest cracked open, to have your heart stopped, to have new arteries attached to your heart so the blood can flow through. And it's not much fun, is it? No, it's not. In 2003, my father had five bypasses done during his surgery. And I always had known my dad to be this robust, strong, optimistic person. And soon after coming out of all of the anesthesia and having the, the breathing tube removed and all that kind of stuff, one of the first things he said was, if I had known it was going to feel like this, I don't know if I would have done it. And some of the others of you who have been through that experience, you may remember, yeah, that's the way I felt too. It's kind of like you've heard the statement, getting hit by a truck. That's what it feels like. And for the first month, Dad just didn't know if this was the best idea. But once he got past about the first month or so, things began to improve and he felt much better. And we're convinced that that surgery added years to his life. And I hope those of you who have had that experience feel the same way. But when we start talking about physically putting something on our hearts, we can see, well, oh, I don't think that's what is meant here. We know how tricky and difficult that can be 
even though we have these incredibly skilled surgeons who are able to do this for us today. We don't think that what Jeremiah was saying is that we're physically going to write something on the heart, but rather put it there in such a way that we know it's been put there by God and that it's been put there in such a way that we remember what's there. We remember what God has said to us and we know that God does not hold back on any of his promises. And if he has made a promise to forget our iniquities, to forgive our sins, we can take that to the bank, so to speak. When God makes a promise, he doesn't turn aside from it. And so God has given the people this promise that we are to put on our hearts to remember what God has done for us, the promise that God has made. This new covenant that is to be for all of God's people. Now this passage that we have participated in, that comes to us from John, tells us of Jesus during his final week. He has come to Jerusalem for the last time. He has had his triumphant entry into that city. And he knows the end is coming soon. And so as he is trying to share with his disciples what they need to know, some Greeks show up. And they apparently had heard about Jesus. And they find Philip. And they say, Philip, we want to see this Jesus. We want to talk to him. We've heard about him. Can we have a word with him? And Philip goes and finds Andrew and says, you know, we got these guys who want to see Jesus. And so they find him and it appears that Jesus is not really giving them a chance to, to get the conversation started because Jesus just kind of launches right in, doesn't he? We don't know exactly what those Greeks might have asked him. But he begins by saying, the time has come. It is now. And I know what's coming. And I'm not going to turn from it. His humanity and his divinity are kind of struggling within him at this point because there's part of him that wants to say, I don't want to go through what I'm going to go through. And yet his divinity within him says, but I'm going to anyway. I'm going to do this anyway. I will not turn away from this. For in fact, this is what I came to do. To die for the people that they may have life. Knowing what that was going to mean for him, Jesus did not turn away from that. And he explained that I need to die so that others will have life. And so he was preparing himself and preparing his disciples for what was about to come. That he was going to offer himself. And he even made the statement that when I am lifted up, all will be drawn to me. Even some of those disciples, perhaps for the first time, will be realizing what Jesus was really all about. And that he did come to die so that they and others would have life. But Jesus also makes this challenging statement as part of his words to these Greeks and to his disciples. For he says, if, if you love your life, you're going to lose it. But if you hate your life in this world, you will not. Now this may sound like a, like a challenging statement. I think it is. And what Jesus is trying to say is, if you really want to be a part of me, if you really want to be a part of what I am all about, then you need to forget about what the world is telling you is important. You need to forget about 
worldly success, put that aside and simply follow me. He also talks about servanthood. There's a lot packed into this statement that Jesus makes to these Greeks. But he talks about losing his life and he talks about us losing our lives. This is the new covenant. Jeremiah was talking about a new covenant and now Jesus came as the new covenant and was saying, if you want to be a part of this, I invite you. I'm going to lose my life. Are you going to lose your lives? I'm going to give my life for you. Are you going to give your life to me? Because if you do that, you can forget about what this world will tell you is important. You can forget about wealth. You can forget about status. You can forget about power because it becomes about servanthood. And are you willing to lose your lives to be one of mine? I'm willing to lose my life for you, Jesus is saying. Are you willing to give up your life to me to make that covenant complete so that we truly can accomplish for God what God intends for the world? Jesus is giving us a sense of this new covenant. Jesus is giving us a sense that he is going to offer himself for us. Now those of you who have gone through bypass surgery, there are things that are visible on your body. There are scars that go along with that. If you've been through that surgery, you have a big one that goes right here. And you may also have scars down your legs where they have taken veins that they can make those bypass arteries with. And so looking at you, somebody could say, yes, I can see that your heart has been worked on. I can see that your heart has been prepared, repaired. Your heart has been changed physically. We might then ask the question, can someone see that our hearts have been created anew within us? If we can see those physical scars from heart surgery, can we also see within the way we live our lives that there is a new heart within us? That's what discipleship is all about. We can see the scars of heart surgery. We can see that someone's heart has been worked on. What evidence is there that our hearts have been worked on? That God has created within us a new heart. That we have been willing to lose our lives to follow Jesus just as he was willing to lose his life that we might be saved. That evidence that we have a new heart within us, that is our witness to the world. That is what we are able to show the world that we can have a new heart created within us. We can become new. Jesus has come and offered a new covenant to us. And he lost his life for it. Are we willing to do the same? Are we willing to lose our lives to follow Jesus, to be a part of that new covenant that he came to offer us? And in so doing, be a witness to the world that says our hearts have been changed. Our hearts are new within us. And that's happened because of Jesus. And then the rest of the world comes to know this love and feel that new heart within them as they see it 
within us. Are we willing to lose our lives to give up those things that the world considers success because Jesus lost his life for us? That's the new covenant that Jesus came to offer us. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your son Jesus who came as the new covenant to offer his life for us. To draw all men, all women, all people of the world to him. Help us to allow our hearts to be changed, to allow our hearts to become new within us. And help us to lose our lives that we might follow Jesus. And through our witness to the world, help others come to experience Jesus for themselves. Help us to do that, we pray. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.